I mean, imagine if Kanye, remember when Kanye came back with uh, his Kim, with his wife at mm -hmm. the time, and they were trying to get into the political thing. Yeah. And he was saying how he was going to come back to Chicago and do this, that, and the other. Yeah. Imagine if he actually did it. It'd be a whole different. You know what I'm saying? It'd have been a different. Because you can say what you want about him, but this generation looks up to him. Yeah, they do. A lot. Of, yeah, they, they still do. They look up to Through him all like of we that. looked up to uh, Red Alert. Yeah, they yeah they they through all of the the controversy they still have love for him. Yeah, you know, and I think that's one of the things is that you know, unfortunately for a lot of people, they don't realize until they get older is that love has always been there. Oh yeah, you oh, know, oh, yeah. and you know, through our you know our travels, you know, sometimes we lose sight of a lot of things. You coming out of the desert, you were. Getting into the production of the things and, and, and going through your path. So, what do you think your greatest contribution to this game is? Consistency. Mm -hmm. I've always tried to be sonically pure, have proper arrangements in my mm -hmm. beats, and I've always shared knowledge. Because you're still... You know, we we pay us the thirties and the forties. Bro, I'm fifty three years old. And I'm proud of it because I know guys that didn't make it past eighteen. Exactly, and so you still doing it. You still got yes, a voice. Sir. Yes, sir. Because you know they always say hip hop is the voice of the youth. But I think who said that though? You know that was the that was the advertisement. Remember I said how you could if you name something you could. That's the myth. That's the myth. That's the myth because what I'm saying is that hip hop is the voice of you. You know, whatever your hip hop is, you you put it out there. You know, to I me, mean? because for me, hip hop didn't have a, a hip hop for me was like you, you could do, you could take this and take that and mix it and, and make it yours. That was, you know what I mean? It didn't have, okay, I have to have eight bars here and a chorus. And I got to come back in with a. a but you, you just gave it the greatest definition ever. I don't even, you only realize what you just said. <laughs> you said your hip hop. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah. That's what it is. It's an yeah. artistic expression, man. Yeah. How can you tell Picasso go paint like Michelangelo? That's not what he want to do. Right. He want to go. He want to go steal from Africans. That's what he want to do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and come back and act like it was his. <laughs> Ain't that what hip hop? Is? <laughs> he he <needs> sampled. <laughs> he was a sampler. <laughs> I mean, Dr. Frankenstein was a sampler. Yeah, you know, so everybody, you know, if you look at it, <laughs> you know, even even in, in the story of creation, you know, he's it was a sample. sample. God made Eve from Adam. You know, so. She was a clone. <laughs> so sampling's been with us from the beginning. I swear, right? I mean, but yeah, getting back to like you said, when I got back and my, my, my initial deal in hip hop was I was I was glad to just be with DA man I was glad okay. to cause he was powerful he had a name in the city yes yes and I was able to give him music mm -hmm. that fit his voice okay and all of those years of studying Dr. Dre studying Marley Ma studying Paul McCartney and, and John Lennon mm -hmm. studying Harold Davis who was the Jackson Fast producer mm -hmm. studying Sarah G yes uh, studying Paul C Oh. Studying, uh, um, what's his name? Keith Harris? They used to do the music for uh, uh, Houdini. What's his name? Oh. Larry Davis. Larry, yeah. Yeah. And then studying Mantronics, Man Parrish, Farley, mm -hmm. uh, Larry Hurd, Steve Hurley, um, Jamie Principal, uh, Chip E. Chip E's so influential and people don't even understand it. One of his songs, a, a breakdown in one of his songs is the foundation for juke music. The breakdown for his house. The boom, 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 boom. That's what juke is built yeah. around that. And right now, we are watching other people take juke and claim it because we not doing it. And somehow it, it slipped through the fingers. Do you know how many samples Wu-Tang use that could be directly... Trace back to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> you, know the, you know the sample for Cash Rules, everything around me, is from a Chicago group. 
Do you know that the sample for uh, Check the Ran? Do do do. Boom, boom, boom. That's Minnie Rapperton. She's from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Um, I can name you a bunch of samples that oh. came from Chicago, and you'd be like, like uh, Big Daddy Kane. Um, ain't no half stepping. That's uh, the emotions. Brian Alley recorded in Chicago. You feeling what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> then you had, you had Curtis Mayfield. Curtis Mayfield had that artist Baby Huey. And he made the record call Listen to Me. And that's uh Eric B and Rock Kim. Mm-hmm. Follow the leader. No, that's follow the leader. Rock him and say, Punk, follow okay. the leader. Pum, okay, pum. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, you, you, it's a whole bunch of records you could throw out from New York that if you did the foundational search, it come from Chicago. Yeah, yeah. So I'm you just... have to say to yourself, who was making breakbeat level records in New York in the seventies? See, that's a question people don't want to don't want to ask. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I don't think that was happening. I mean, think about that, it. That, that came out of Chicago. Who in New York in the 1970s was making loop level breakbeat ready records? They was doing something else. The only record that they could think come from Chicago from New York is Synthetic Substitution. Okay, but that's just one. And maybe Impeach the President. Okay, but two. But James Brown, all that shit come from Cincinnati, mm -hmm. Midwest, Midwest, Zap, Dayton, Midwest. Yep. We just don't stand on it, but the we 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 made the ground. We just don't stand on it. Mm -hmm. uh, think about um Ohio players, the Ohio players. All that come from the Midwest. We hear about the South. We hear about the West. Yes. We hear about the East. <laughs> we don't never hear about the Midwest. And it was there. It was there. Imagine if Traxter. Twister, Eminem, Nelly mm. had come together on some Midwest shit in the nineties and and if Ludacris acknowledged that he was from Chicago. Yeah. That would have been something. That that would have been super. That would have been that would have been something. That would have been super. But yeah, so <laughs> it's it's sad that you gotta leave your city to get on, man. It's like I mean, even the Jackson Fire had to leave Gary. Yeah. And that's 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 a whole nother. <laughs> but so you doing the you went through some deals and some first deal we situations. got situations. Yeah, I, I got a deal. We got a deal with uh with RCA, and it didn't work out like we thought it would because mm -hmm. we made a single. We got a single deal. Okay. And then um. Uh, I started doing stuff with the Gov, mm -hmm. and we started putting out music on our own because we, honestly, I wish Turk was sitting right here next to me, man, because, mm -hmm. well, Turk was the first one in our group to say, man, let's get our own equipment. Like, when I met Turk, Turk had a task cam, uh, I think he had a four-track mm -hmm. four cassette recorder. Okay. And then we started buying, like, uh, rolling uh, the digital stuff, the, the 1680s and the... First we got the 880, then we got the 1680. And then we got, I think we got the 2480. And then I moved into Pro Tools in like 90, 98, 99. Okay. And um, I start, I put out, me and Ren put out an album in a 91 called Strictly for the Streets. Okay. And uh, we sold a couple of thousand copies. You know, we was mm -hmm. out the trunk with it. Okay. You know. And one of my proudest moments was uh, Georgia, Georgia's music room let me put my poster up inside his store, oh, inside wow. the store, inside <laughs> the window. Okay, okay. And, um, and then we went from there and I started working on solo stuff. Okay. Because I I had got disillusioned with the, with the business of the of hip hop game. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to get signed at that point no more because okay. it was like, I always got love for Twister, man, and I, I, I talk that shit, you know, but Twister stayed in Chicago, and he tried to 
yeah. give the city a heart. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, these little niggas, excuse my French, these little cats, they need to be able to see Twister riding down Lakeshore Drive. Yeah. Or riding down mm-hmm. Cottage Grove or something like that. That was Twister. Yeah. You know, they ain't going to see too much of Kanye. You know, Kanye, when he come back, it's a it's a parade. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Not to diss nobody. I'm just talking about just the circumstances of it all. But so the first thing I did was I, I started making my own stuff because I didn't, I didn't rap at first. I was just strictly a producer. Okay. And uh, then I started putting out little songs on my own. Uh-huh. And there was a DJ named Shine T in Chicago. Yeah. And he would play my stuff at all of his parties. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I got cool with Titan. Like, me and Titan been tight for years. <laughs> and Titan, and you got DJ Snooze. You got a lot yeah. of DJs that we know. Yeah. And so long story short, we um, I put out a song in... Um, uh, I'm thinking 2019 or something mm-hmm. called the Fat Boy Anthem. Yes. And you know, it's, it's a house record with me rapping on top of it because I wanted to take it back to the elements. You okay. know, I wanted to take it back yeah. to, man, Chicago used to have fun. Mm-hmm. And being in that party atmosphere and, mm-hmm. yeah. Then uh, a couple of years later, I came out with a, this song called Yo, With Yo. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> I put it out Unknowingly, I put it out the week COVID hit. The week they shut everything down. <laughs> and I had went around Chicago. I had gay DJs copies and hit them with a little something, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And they closed everything down the next week. Mm. So I sat on that. Then I got a new song I just put out called Free My. Yes. Yeah. And yes. I want to discuss that song for a yeah, second. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that because <laughs> um, about... I want to say two or three, not about three weeks ago, four weeks. Four weeks, a month ago. But a month ago, you you came out with this song, and a video, mm-hmm. and that it had this message in it. Right. So what prompted you to do this? I got some cousins, man, that are genuine dudes, mm-hmm. and they 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 leaders. Okay. And. They sitting in prison because one bad decision. Yes. You have to be consciously aware of not just your surroundings. You got to be consciously aware of who you are. Mm-hmm. And I've been a bad big cousin because I don't write them and I don't go visit them. But they always on my mind because, you know, I used to hold them in my arms when they was babies. Okay. And you look up and they say, so-and-so in jail for this or so-and-so in jail for that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man... I tried to be a better influence on it, but it wasn't just me. They had fathers and other cousins. But I always tried to be on the straight and narrow. But I realized that people make their own decisions and you can't take it on yourself, you know, especially when you're not really in their life every day. Mm-hmm. But what threw me off with, with the song, what made me make that song was, we was at a party and I heard one of my friends we was in Indiana in a, at the Genesis Convention Center, actually. Okay. And um, I heard one of my friends was talking to one of his buddies that I didn't know. Mm-hmm. And he was like, man, free song, 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 right? And my man had a shirt on that had to do free whatever, like free Willy, like whatever. Okay. Free Willy, nigga, you know. So I was like, man, who's Willy? What would Willy do? Man, Willy, uh, he raped two chicks and, and killed three, uh, three people in the family. I was like, Shit, free him for what? So he can fin- finish it off? Right. <laughs> and then I got home that night and I thought about it and I say, we be hollering free my nigga, mm-hmm. but we never say what he gonna do when he get out. Yeah. Like, is he gonna get on the good <laughs> side or is he gonna get on the bad side? Yeah. And I decided to write a story based on that principle as far as showing what happens to some dudes when you go to jail like mm-hmm. real story mm-hmm. and um, I came across this program that lets you make your own pictures from text okay it's an AI program okay and I found out a way to make damn near photorealistic pictures yeah okay and I said well let me um, try this out first because I'm a photographer mm-hmm. also 
And I was going to use this as a storyboard just to, to, to get my ideas out. And like, yeah, this is what I'm going to use this for. But when I put it in order and I was playing it with the song one night, and I was like, this is better than the actual video. Like, this is this is better than what I would do okay. with a video because it's, it's like, this, it's a steel picture. It makes you look at the picture. Mm -hmm. And you, some people rewind and like, wait a minute, what? A, you know, that kind of that kind of move. And he complimented the song perfectly. And um, I played it for my mother and my sister them first. Mm -hmm. And my niece was like, oh, that's going to go viral. Right? Okay. I was like, really? And then I played it for uh, my boy Turk and I played it for Rhythm. Mm -hmm. And my boy Villain, Villain, I let Villain hear the song. And he was like, man, bam, that's the woman. That's, that's it. And then I sent it to, uh, I put it out mm -hmm. and I sent it to you and I sent it to Dr. Groove. Okay. Um, you remember who Dr. Groove? Yes. Yeah. So Dr. Groove has always been in the background mm -hmm. controlling shit from day one. And he took it and did something with it. And within one day it had almost 300 hits. Okay. And right now it's sitting at 800 hits. If mm -hmm. you go to YouTube, type in. Canisto, that's K H A N I S T O. Pterodon, T E R R A D O N. And the song is called Free My. And you have to put in parentheses the word explicit. Okay. Or radio edit. But the explicit one is the ones I'm trying to run the number up on. Okay. And um, check it out, man. You, it's, it's, a, it's an experience because. It, it really ain't like nothing that's out right now. Yeah. I mean, you've heard it. What do you think? I Like I say, that was... It, it reminded me <laughs> of, you know, somebody giving me that talk about, you know, r reality. You know, and, you know, it was no sugarcoating, <laughs> no, no fantasy. Something. Right. It's, it's the reality. And that's what's needed. I mean, then you think about it, man, you... You see your cousin, you see pictures, mm -hmm. and it's like when the president go in, like when Obama went in, he was, he looked like he was in his 30s, and mm -hmm. four years later, he looked like he was in his <laughs> 50s, and now he looked like he's in his 60s, you know, he looking yeah. his age, yeah. right? Jail does that to you, too, man. I've seen guys that they went in, they was baby face, you know, smiling. Mm -hmm. Two years later, they look like they've been in jail 30 years. Yeah. They got yeah. that look in their eyes that I done seen some shit and I done done some shit. shit. Yeah. And I ain't like neither one of it. Exactly. So it's like, um, yeah. So that, yeah. that song is, 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 is trying to wake them up. Yeah. And, and I'm not, a, I'm not no, uh, no revolutionary activist or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But I see so much in our neighborhoods, man, that, I mean, the, the purpose of hip hop, what I love about hip hop, Mm -hmm. Hip hop is a way out. Yeah, yes. Hip hop is a way out. Yes, and like my boy Turk, Turk opens his studio for so many young people that if you want to come record, he gonna make you a beat. He gonna record with you. Mm -hmm. Turk got pro level beats. Okay, and you got villain. You know, I'm, I'm saying the same names because these are the people that I really chop it up with. But mm -hmm. there's other guys out here that's doing it. Chicago is a Mm -hmm. Chicago is really a city of nine million people. You know, they play it off like, oh, you got the suburb here, but in New York, we will all be one borough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nine million people in Chicago. Yeah. So everybody got their own thing. I could, I could throw a rock across the street and hit somebody that's making some beats. Yeah. And they cold. Mm -hmm. And um, so my, my thing now is what I'm trying to do now is to be my age in rap. Okay. And to rap from, uh, I could have fun, uh -huh. but I want to be grown. I want to talk about grown people things. Yeah. I want to talk about, we don't own none of the businesses in our neighborhood mm -hmm. except for cosmetology. Cosmetology. Yeah. And there's nothing against nobody, but it's if you don't more. own your own food and water, you don't own nothing. Yeah. Because now somebody controls your movement. Yeah. It controls your loyalty. They control everything about you. Like when we had that snowstorm a few months ago and everything was frozen, mm -hmm. 
if my man at the gas station didn't want to open up and you ain't had no food in the house, you were stuck without food for two or three days. So I want to explore that in hip hop, man. I don't want to, um, it's not that I'm a, a, a activist or anything like that. Cause I'm not out here, you know, marching and nothing like that. I, I, I lead with my life and mm -hmm. I, I lead by example. Okay. But some of us got to be grown. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we was coming up, when you think about it, when you look back on it, the music our mamas and daddies listened to, mm -hmm was grown. Yeah. And then you realize yeah. like the Temptations, they was in their twenties. And they were singing about grown. Yeah, they situations. were singing about the runaway child, runaway wild and mm -hmm. uh superstar and, and uh what's what's the record that everybody made fun of, but it's really Papa was a Rolling Stone. Papa was a Rolling Stone. Well they made them records when they was in their twenties. Mm -hmm. But then you got treated like a lady, they was in their forties and fifties. Mm -hmm. I mean think about it, hip hop, okay, okay. We had Curtis Mayfield, Aretha Franklin, uh, mm -hmm. James Brown, those guys that they were talking about some of their music, Marvin Gaye. But then you look at hip hop, and people forget this, hip hop was considered a novelty until the message came out. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we had Rappers Delight, and we had Christmas rapping and the breaks, mm -hmm. you had Blondie with Rapture, you had a modern romance with Can You Move and all oh, that yeah. stuff. And, but we didn't take it seriously. Like, hey, that's gonna be here forever. It was just, no, a, it was it a fact. Yeah, it was. It was. But when they came out with the message, and it was about the realities of life, and even though the breaks touched on it first, mm -hmm. if you if you really pay attention to the lyrics mm -hmm. of the breaks, but it was more of a party song, so you didn't really, yeah. you know. Yeah, like what you you're mourning. It was like, you know, little incidents that happened throughout your right, day. Right, that's the breaks. But the message was like dealing with what was going on in overall society. Now, the first um, um, time I heard the message, man, I was like 11, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. You remember that feeling when you first heard Trans Europe expressing numbers? Yeah. And you felt like you was hearing the future and you weren't supposed to be hearing it? Yeah. I mean, for real. Yeah, because it was, it, was, it, was, it was nothing like you heard before that. It was crazy. You know, and the message also was nothing like you heard before that and then when Zap came out with more bounce of the ounce it was like more man what planet is this from yeah and it was you know because the way they was making those instruments sound and mm. the, the the bass is bouncing and mm -hmm. you know and the dynamics of the sonics you watch chicago is i want to, to be wrecked to be to be rectified is mm -hmm. i would love for the 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 originators to get their props duro mm -hmm. you mm-hmm Pink House. Yes. Um, Crash. Cash is yeah. D. Uh, Crunch. DA. Uh, yeah. Twister. Mm -hmm. You got Villain. Rhythm. Mm -hmm. You got um, Cooley. Uh, There's so many people I could name. And, I, and if I mention anybody's name, I am really sorry. But there's so many people that was there yeah. that don't have the acknowledgement. And they and they helped a lot of people tighten their game up. Yeah, they helped a lot of people through to navigate through this business. You know, to to be able to pursue their dreams. Quick Silver Cooley, that was you a know, cold name too, boy. you know, and he, you know, the things that he did, yeah. you know, just not on the music side, but I'm talking about the whole whole thing of showing people mm -hmm. that you know you, you could do this here oh yeah you could do this you know that you asked me when i first came back from the military mm -hmm. that was the big local hit was no type of drug dealer my man um my, uh, uh, cool, 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 quicksilver cooley and black ag and black ag because mm -hmm. black ag me and him went to high park career academy we was in the magnet school okay together. okay and you know that brother like black and gifted that brother truly was black and gifted you that know it was funny that brother used to bring his own microphone to the shows yeah <laughs> and and you know that was <laughs> that was that professionalism right uh, he had a cordless mic but did nobody else even think about that yeah you know and people see that's what, that's what i'm saying is that 
even not even looking beyond the Chicago borders, we have a lot of creative. We had people that was doing things, doing things, and and, and figuring it out of how I'm gonna present myself. I mean, think about how, how uh, thirty three and a third them used to DJ and my man DJ Ram. Right. Thank you. Remember how um um. Do roll them used to throw the parties, see who walked three ways. Yeah. And they used to have everybody there. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about it wasn't no fight. You better not start no fight. It mm -hmm. wasn't even that. Right, because this was this is the time that Chicago was, you know, putting it on. It, you know, you had them there throwing their parties. Yes, sir. You phonics. You know, you had all these groups that were popping up and figuring out how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, when they found spots, they found the spot you had the spot over there. It was in one of the where the warehouse used to be when it was on uh Randolph or somewhere over there in that area. You know, they had a little rap club, the rap trap, and you, got sub you know, yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah. Man, oh man, that uh, Nick Vickers the elbow room, people elbow was doing room. uh, red yeah. dogs. You know, even, even over that time, um, we did a couple of shows at uh, the Wild Hair. Wild Hair, yeah. yeah. U.S. Beer Club. Man, yo. <laughs> you know. Man, we did. I mean, it was, <laughs> Chicago was that city, man. It's like I, I, I used to tell my younger cousin them, man, if you ain't never performed at Mr. Burnside or Mickey's Blue Room, I mean, what's his name? Was, was uh, uh, Manny's Blue Room. Mm -hmm. Don't come to me talking about some you did no show. <laughs> Yeah, you know I'm saying if you yeah. did, if you did a show with uh, Outcast, it's because somebody that you know paid to bring Outcast to Chicago. Mm -hmm. That was part of your promotion. Yeah. But if you ain't ever really booked no show at Washington Square Park and you just go out there and rock a show, don't don't tell. Me. But this internet has changed. This <laughs> I got a song called "Old Niggas" and it start off like this: It say, "This young cat was like, yo, nigga." Who the fuck is this old nigga? Still trying to spit and be cold, nigga. Damn, you need to let it go, nigga. All these old niggas need to stroll, nigga, and let these young niggas take control, nigga. It's our time now, so let it go, nigga. Sit back and let us blow figures. I'm like, whoa, nigga. We not old, nigga. Not O-L-D, old, nigga. We O-W-E-D, old, nigga. Woo! <laughs> Tell your mama back up off the pole, nigga. <laughs> you driving robberies, nigga. Who built the road, nigga? <laughs> Who didn't back down and didn't fold, nigga, when this rap game was super cold, nigga? I do this for those that never blow, nigga. But gave the rap game their whole soul, nigga. Putting records out that never sold, nigga. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, indeed. We at this point now. You still put, putting out music. You still got the passion for it. Mm -hmm. So you doing both production and uh, I do everything. I do photography, videography, production, write, and I make my own beats. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sorry, because I decided to not let somebody else control my talent. Yes, that's the beauty of the internet. The internet affords you the ability to do things at your own pace. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys don't realize that you probably make more from streaming than you would have from a record deal. In okay. that, streaming replaced streaming replaced the home stereo. Yes. So it used to be the radio station would play your hit or what you thought was the hit, mm -hmm. and that was it. But with streaming, people are playing every record on the album. Yeah. So you, now you're not just buying a whole album, but you might buy the album one time. Mm -hmm. Back in the day. Yeah. But now you got people that they go back and they listen to this record on the album that nobody ever thought about listening to. Mm -hmm. But you look up and this one record mm -hmm. got a hundred million listeners and it ain't even a hit. Yeah. It's yeah. just because it's on the album. Mm -hmm. You know. And then and it's like, like, hey, let me take a second look at that. Like I heard that um, Dirk is making so much because people want to hear what they were like before they left Chicago. Yeah. So they're going back and they're watching the old videos, mm -hmm. listening to the old songs. Mm -hmm. The before the shit I don't like song. Right. So it's a whole if you're from Chicago, man, and you got music that you didn't put out, put it, put out. it out, man. It's it's an audience out there for it, bro. Sometimes you can overlook talent. Yeah. Yeah. Like how did how did Beyonce slip out of uh 
J. Prince's fingers. You missed it. You, you get what I'm saying? Y'all in the same city. You missed it. But you in a city of more than a million people. You don't know everybody. <laughs> so if you got opportunity to oh, put yeah. that music out. DLC is from Texas too. And gave the whole West Coast. <laughs> a rap style. A rap style. He, 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 he. <laughs> <laughs> he saved N.W.A. <laughs> Him and, hold up. Him and J.J. Fad, who uh, they some don't get the, the sequence. Sequence. Angie B., Blondie, and Cheryl Pearl. they from down south. And they make the first rap record with singing on it. And they don't get the props. Mm -hmm. Everybody act like Salt and Pepper was first. Nope. Sequence came out before Funky 4 Plus 1. Yep. But anyway, what so, are you saying? <laughs> so get that music out there. So get those projects out there. We're in a digital age where you could just take it, clean it up, put it out there. You don't even got to clean it up because, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just the, the rowdiness was part of Wu-Tang's sound. Yeah, that grit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I right. mean. Yeah, you can leave it, leave, it, leave, it, leave, it, leave it as is, put it out there because... I've listened to some stuff that, yeah. Can we talk about them albums like back in the day that in, the, 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 the producers in particular, they would wait for that album that came out before they finished what they was doing. One of the albums that everybody waited to come out was The Chronic. Yeah. yeah. And anything Dre puts out, like even to this day, producers would sit back and be like, let me see what Dr. Dre finna do. Yeah, they waiting. When the RZA, when they came out with that first Wu album, yeah, if you heard that, because remember they came out with the snippet tape first, mm -hmm. and I think it had Protect Your Neck on it, Method Man, and uh, uh, what's your what's your other record? Uh, Shame on the nigga, Shame on it. I think I was on there too, right? Yeah. But how many producers changed their whole style once Thirty Six Chambers came out? A lot of them. So, so, what project? What, what, what we, what are we looking at? You know, you doing next? What's, what's coming oh, up I got next? A, 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 my the name of my uh, company is Big Push Productions, right? Mm -hmm. This is really me by myself, right? Okay. And I get input from Rhythm Villain and Turhan, okay. right? But I got an album coming out. And I think I'm naming it. Uh, the Return of the Push. Okay. Or uh, Revenge of the Fifth. Right? But one of the two, and, and, and it's, it's going to be, I don't want to do just um, hip hop, hip hop. Okay. You know, we from Chicago. We got Steppers music, man. We got Juke. It's just funny that it's like somebody sat back in the last year in the, in the major industry and said, wait a minute, Chicago ain't using none of their house music. Beyonce. Drake, little Uzi, take that music, man. We're going we're to wrap it up, but um, I enjoy myself, man. I did too, because, you know, these things are informative, you know, because one of the things I, I really i am trying to do with this is to educate people that just because you don't see somebody on your screen, that don't mean that they didn't do nothing, they ain't doing nothing, that they part of this foundation that the person that you see it's standing on. But I'm, you know what? I'm going to say that too. And then I'm going to give it up to NUR, mm -hmm. HBK, mm -hmm. KKC. Yes, indeed. And 92.3 when it first came out with Spank Buddha now. Yeah. And Pink House. Yeah. Because you guys nurtured Chicago hip hop. Mm -hmm. And y'all gave us an avenue that the main radio station didn't deal with. Yeah. And uh, I just want to give y'all y'all flowers now, because without y'all there was no us. Like I say, my cousin them came to me, and the first thing they was like, "Man, you need to listen to HBK. You need to listen to NUI." My cousin Fruit, mm -hmm. TMC, Paro, uh, Flair, uh, Dave. Uh, they was called the uh, they what was the name of their crew? Uh, to get the whole crew. Out the house okay. record, get the whole. Get the whole crew. <laughs> and to get the whole crew, but they could rap. Mm -hmm. And TMC, you know who TMC is, right? Yes, indeed. TMC is a lyricist elite. Yes, indeed. One of one of Chicago's 
premier. Exactly. Premier top tier. And that's who I made my first beef for. Okay. You okay. know what I'm saying? And uh, I just want to make music, man. I just want to. I just want to make music, man. I just want to give a shout out to those uh, still in the game, man, and who haven't given up, man. Don't give up, man, because why give up something you love, man? You know, yeah. they say Da Vinci died with a paintbrush in his hand. Mm. So you should die. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm no, just no. saying, keep doing it. Like, keep what's doing it. <coughs> Curtis Mayfield, we talking about Curtis Mayfield. Oh, he, after, even after the accident, he was still. Yeah, Curtis Mayfield and then Jackie Wilson had a heart attack on stage mm. and he died in the hospital years later but these guys were performing until they couldn't Teddy Pendergrass mm. kept going yeah cause even like Etta James and all these yeah. you know um, Marvin Gaye was performing the day before he died Michael Jackson did a rehearsal the night he the day before he died mm -hmm. and he was 50 yeah shit and, and you know when shit the vault of Prince. Princess, Prince, Prince exactly. Walt, you know, I just would like to. <laughs> oh, and let me say this to Michael Jackson and Prince fans. Those were two brilliant black entertainers, students of James Brown, students mm -hmm. of Sly Stone. Mm -hmm. And all those people that came before. And them. all those became before them. Louis Jordan, Cab Calloway. You had uh, Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, these guys from Chicago. And I'm going to say this. You do not have to diminish one to make the other one great. Exactly. They both great. And that's why they hate them. Mm -hmm. If that was a white prince or a white Michael Jackson, they would be bigger than Elvis. Yeah, because, I mean, just look at the, the legacy that they came from. Mm -hmm. The grace that they came from. Louis Armstrong. Yes, sir. Dizzy yes, sir. Gillespie. Yes, sir. You know, I mean, these these Boosie Collins is a is a phenomenal. Charlie Parker, you, you got Jimi Hendrix, Buddy Buddy Guy, Buddy Guy, um, uh, Hubert Sumlin. Hubert Sumlin was a uh, Highland Wilson guitar player. Came up with a lot of riffs. Willie Dixon. If you don't know who Willie Dixon is, if you're from Chicago. Go look up Willie Dixon. Willie Dixon was a bass player and songwriter at Chess Records. He wrote roughly 50% of Led Zeppelin's catalog that they didn't give him credit for until they had to. I'm talking about records that note for note sound just like him. Chicago, man. Anything else? Uh, Go buy my record, man. Go, go stream it. It's called Free My... I got other records online, but this is the one I'm pushing. Free my, free F I E, space M Y. It's on all the streaming services. It's on YouTube, and um, go check it out, man. And just sit back and if you want to discuss it, put something in the comments. I answer and respond to every comment. Shout out to Sister Ange. Yes, indeed. on your six pack last week you had to send your lawyer six racks now you sending letters home trying to get your bitch back now you in the joint making new decisions now you locked down joining new religions used to have the pot whipping in the kitchen used to couldn't tell a nigga shit now you want to listen four walls will break down the humble niggas and if you ain't strong you will crumble nigga so don't you fuck around fall down a fumble nigga don't let these animals show you it's a jungle nigga Look at what we got now, look how they just stir you up, put you in the pot now You ain't give a fuck when you was on the block and you ain't really give a fuck if them kids got shot, did you? Now your whole family got an ante up They didn't hit your hands and your granny up Everybody got
Gotta chip in for a lawyer Where your homies at, they ain't did shit for ya Just memories, negative energy Only those who came to me came with the remedies Now you all stay about to do a century One day if the niggas on the block still mention me Cause y'all be hollering free my nigga, huh? What you gon' do when the kid out? Y'all be hollering free my nigga, huh? But what he gon' do when he get out? Y'all be hollering free my nigga, huh? What you gon' do when he get out? Y'all be hollering free my nigga. All the homies on the block hollering free you. But now one of these niggas came to see you. Put some money on your books, try to feed you. One of them hollering at your girl trying to be you. It's fucked up how these goons go switch. When y'all did the dirt, but you ain't never snitch. Uh uh, you never did the Kakashi to your bossy. Hits a nigga on the block wearing your Versace. Uh, now you sitting in the cell and they laughing on sales and they didn't raise hell. Middle of the cape, but you the last one to bail. When they took your ass to jail, they ain't even raised bail. Well, now they say your name less every week. To one day, you just old boy from up the street. Put you in the jungle where gorillas eat. Honey bun on your mattress, so now you sweet. Late night on deck, where the mobs deep. Three niggas walking in your cell while the guards sleep. One of them got a shank and you saying please. And the other niggas forcing you to your knees. And they ain't came to place where they ain't gay. But since you down there, you might as well go and pray. Dear God, please take it all away. They done gave me 50 years and this is just the first day. Cause y'all be hollering free, my nigga, huh? What you gon' do when you get out? Y'all be hollering free, my nigga, huh? But what he gon' do when you get out? Y'all be hollering free, my nigga, huh? What you gon' do when you get out? Y'all be hollering free, my nigga.